A city on the verge of greatness. A new type of city, based not on the man, but on the automobile, the car, the symbol of freedom and vitality. Where every man can own his own home and have room to breathe and not be overlooked by his neighbors. A city where a man's home is his castle. A quarter acre of the dream made possible by victory. A city of opportunists. A city of dreams. Where Hollywood will shape the thoughts and desires of the entire planet. City of pioneers. A city of dreamers. undercurrents, where not everything is as it seems. A 20th century city that will become a model for the world. A city that has no boundaries, that will stretch as far as the eye can see. Stumped. Ideas? Careful with Monroe, Phelps. He's got a lot of clout and he's pretty sharp. See what you can get from him. Detectives Phelps and Biggs, LAPD, to see Leland Monroe. Do you have an appointment? We're the police, lady. We don't need an appointment. Can I tell him what it's about? It's an official investigation. There are two police officers here to see Mr. Monroe. Send them through. And that's our cue. Thanks, ma'am. I won't have a bad word said about Lee the Monroe. Mr. Monroe is improving the lives of ordinary families. It's very noble. May I help you, gentlemen? I wonder how many more layers we got to go through to get to this guy. We would like to speak to Mr. Monroe. I'm afraid it's impossible. Mr. Monroe's schedule is booked weeks in advance. Cut to the chase, sister. Is he in? I'm not at liberty to reveal that officer. So he hired you for your intelligence? I find that offensive. You have every right to. This is getting us nowhere, miss. Consino. Would you like us to return with a warrant? That won't be necessary, gentlemen. Come into my office. You like a cigar? Drink, boys. Sure, I'll have a scotch. Biggs! We're investigating a series of domestic fires, Mr. Monroe. It's terrible, boys. How can I help? I hope that's all. Can we speed this up a little? Elysian Fields and Suburban Redevelopment Fund flyers keep turning up in the vicinity of the fires. They're turning up all over town, boys. Can you imagine the current demand for housing? So that's your explanation, Mr. Monroe? Coincidence? Explanation? Why, what's to explain? I advertise on radio and billboards for buyers, and I advertise for sellers using waybills. We hear that Suburban is under 
severe time pressure to complete work on the new houses. I think you're getting heavy-handed about it, and it's gone wrong. I hope you have some proof of how I'm involved in this. I'll be happy to sue you for whatever you're worth. Rancho Escondido burned to the ground last night. That's one of my prestige developments. I'm a victim of these fires too, Detective. What's your connection to the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? It's an organization of civic-minded individuals whose goal is to make the city a better place for its inhabitants. Something I was proud to be asked to join. What do you know about a competition for families to win free vacations to Catalina Island? My company runs many promotions. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. Level with me, Mr. Monroe. You know all about the vacation offers. You can believe whatever you like, son. You're missing the vital ingredient called proof. You come in here making stupid, baseless allegations and you think you can ruin my day? Well, we'll see about that. Travel agent has a list of the winners. Three of the names on that list have had their houses burnt to the ground. And how many names on the list have not had a fire? I don't know. You wouldn't make much of a lawyer, detective. If you're gonna rely on statistics, then you better get them straight. Two families are dead, Mr. Monroe. This isn't a question of criminal liability. We're looking at conspiracy to commit murder. Do you know who you're talking to, son? You want to use incendiary language like that with me? I suggest you should leave immediately. We've made offers to buy houses in areas where fires have been recorded. <laughs> Are you suggesting that I'm burning people out of their homes so that I can sell them new ones? What happens to your plans if a family like the Morellis refuses to sell? We work around them. Business finds a way. That's the American way. I think you're being less than candid, Mr. Monroe. You're building these homes to some timetable. You're under pressure to get rid of the holdouts. And how exactly do you think you can prove that in a court of law, detective? Every developer is under time pressure, son. On one hand, you got the investors who want a return. On the other, the purchasers who want what they paid for. That's business. Now are we finished? So it's for the greater good, then. One man standing in defiance of what you think is best for the city. I thought an American's home was their castle. I'm not sure I like your tone, son. What's Elysian Fields' involvement in Rancho Escondido? One of our latest housing developments. It was due to open on the weekend, or was before the unfortunate conflagration. It met with building code regulation. Absolutely. Only the best for our returning heroes. You're lying, Monroe. There's something out of kilter about that development. Son, I've had enough of you and your fidgety friend. There's no way in hell you can prove that my materials were inferior. No offense, son, but you don't have the first goddamn idea what you're talking about. Do you have building plans? Material requisition information? Work logs? Records of any kind that we could see? I'm sure we do, Detective. I tell you what, I'll have someone pull the paperwork from the archives and uh, get back to you. Mr. Monroe, I can have every building inspector from the city and the county going over those buildings. <laughs> Son, you have me shaking in my boots. <laughs> we need something to go on, otherwise more people will get hurt and you'll keep losing houses. Well, I want to help in any way I can, officers. The contractors I use for waybills, do you suppose it 
might be one of them. I have a list of their names, if it'll be of any help. My secretary will provide you with the list. On your way out. Help me out. Check the list. We need to know who's posting the flyers. May I help you, gentlemen? Who are you? How did you get in? Detectives Phelps and Biggs, LAPD. We'd like to ask you some questions. Oh. Why didn't you say so, officer? We're investigating a series of domestic fires, Mr. Monroe. It's terrible, boys. How can I help? Elysian Fields and Suburban Redevelopment Fund flyers keep turning up in the vicinity of the fires. They're turning up all over town, boys. Can you imagine the current demand for housing? So that's your explanation, Mr. Monroe? Coincidence? Explanation? Why, what's to explain? I advertise on radio and billboards for buyers, and I advertise for sellers using waybills. We found a family burnt out in their home. Another house burned to the ground. Another Elysian Fields flyer. Our information is that they didn't want to sell. Are you saying that's something to do with me? Is that your point? Point is, every time we find a family barbecued, we find one of your flyers. Is that good advertising? What do you know about a competition for families to win free vacations to Catalina Island? My company runs many promotions. I'm not familiar with that one. Level with me, Mr. Monroe. You know all about the vacation offers. You can believe whatever you like, son. You're missing the vital ingredient called proof. Your face is all over the flyers, Mr. Monroe. You know about the prizes, and you're aware that they get given to holdouts. My face is the brand. It's on all our advertising. Did you know that the mayor and the chief of police are part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Do you want to accuse them of murder as well? We've made offers to buy houses in areas where fires have been recorded. Are you suggesting that I'm burning people out of their homes so that I can sell them new ones? What happens to your plans if a family like the Morellis refuses to sell? We work around them. Business finds a way. That's the American way. Come on, Mr. Monroe. You expect me to believe that you would build a new development with one of those old piles smack bang in the center of it? Progress is an inexorable process, detective. Those who choose to stand in defiance are usually confined to the waste basket of history. To answer your question, yes, we would build around them if we had to. Most people see sense. What's Elysian Fields' involvement in Rancho Escondido? One of our latest housing developments. It was due to open on the weekend or was before the unfortunate conflagration. It met with building code regulation. Absolutely. Only the best for our returning heroes. You're lying, Monroe. There's something out of kilter about that development. Son, I've had enough of you and your fidgety friend. There's no way in hell you can prove that my materials were inferior. I'm no expert, but I think we'll find that the bricks being used on those houses are undersized and the mortar is faulty. And there's no wall ties connecting the masonry to the frame. Every building is built to a budget, boys. Those buildings were inspected and fully insured by California Fire and Life. Investment of that magnitude demands it. Do you think that they'd vouch for the buildings without examining them? The arsonists, 
Do you have any suspects? We aren't at liberty to say. I didn't think so. The contract is I use for waybills. You suppose it could be any of them? I have a list of their names, if it would be of any help. That would be very helpful, Mr. Monroe. Glad to hear it. I'm always happy to help the LAPD. My secretary will provide you with that list. Did you know that I'm on the board of the police pension fund? In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen join forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GIs. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He's our latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire and Life. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor. District Attorney Don Sandler and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be in such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the thespian fraternity. I find that those of artistic temperament are often of a fragile mental disposition. It's a short step from miscreant to recidivism, Doctor. Very true. But I think we could all agree that the City of Angels does rather well basking in the reflection of the motion picture industry. Here, here, And it's something that every sucker getting off a train at Union Station wants a part of. Gentlemen, we're here to sell the American dream, and Hollywood is our greatest advertiser. So... How is your new development selling, Leland? Cannot throw them up fast enough, Ray. And that's part of the problem, Leland. Washington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public housing. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now, that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds via the back door. You can't have it both ways, Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean uh, our pockets, Leland. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. So, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise three billion dollars. I need to find a game well or a telephone. Sure, he turned up all right. He's wishing he didn't. He's in the trunk. He's going nowhere. The boys introduced themselves. <laughs> what do you want done with him, Mr. Monroe? Yeah, I know a good place. I'll pick up a shovel and a pick on the way. It's up in the hills behind Griffith Park. We'll deal with that German bitch next.
Sorry, pal. Desperate times. Do it, Jack. Keep your voice down, Leland. Control is of the essence. Keep your voice down? You know how much these sons of bitches charge for lunch? Fuck them! Leland, we will not solve our problems by announcing them to the general public. We only speed ourselves on our way to the gallows. He's your imbecile, Harlan. Get him under control or get rid of him. Speaking of which, I've had to dispose of our young medical student. What? You certainly are a cold character, Harlan. He has a friend called Kelso. He knows all about the development on Normandy Avenue. I know about Kelso. And you thought it unimportant to inform me. I thought I could take care of it. Have you? No, I haven't. Kelso works for Benson. Is he reliable? No, he's totally unreliable. But he has so many pernicious habits, he's got nowhere to run. Can you take care of Kelso? Don't push me, Harlan. Get rid of the fruitcake. No longer necessary. I'll take care of Jack Kelso. Who's asking? Leland Monroe. I was wondering when you'd get around to calling. I'd like to meet with you, Mr. Kelso. I bet you would, Mr. Monroe. But I value my skin highly enough to not want to meet with you. Why don't you just send some more of your boys around and we'll have a nice cup of tea? You realize that I could make you a very wealthy man, Mr. Kelso. Better than $220 a month? I'm going to have to let it slide, Mr. Monroe. Are you haggling with me, Jack? I might be. Come around to my place at 9. 5164 Santa Monica Boulevard. You'll come? I might. Good night, Mr. Monroe. Appreciate the help, all of you. We can reminisce later. I want a minimum of noise and no prisoners. No prisoners? This isn't Pele Lu, Jack. These guys are grifting GIs. That's what they do for a living. It's okay, Jack. We all feel the same way. Just hasn't turned out quite the way we imagined. Let's get it done. Teams of two at the ready. Got the bastard! Move up! 
stay down, damn it! Alright men, hold the perimeter. I got personal business with Mr. Leland Monroe. You're a very sweet-looking girl to be holding such a big gun. I know how to use it, mister. I'm sure you do. So how about pointing it over there in the direction of Hollywood instead of at me, princess? You're quite the wise guy. I don't normally shoot women, princess. How about putting the cannon down? Ah! Oh. <sighs> I didn't think you had the guts, sweetheart. I was never very good at reading women. Monroe! Where are you, damn it? You want me? You got me. Jack Kelso. That's my opening negotiating position. Oh, you crazy son of a bitch. How did you get in here? I'm bleeding to death. Get me a doctor. I thought I had an invitation, Monroe. Your boys outside were certainly expecting me. That's my second offer. You sadistic bastard. What do you want? I'm going to take a look around, Monroe. Then I want you to tell me what you know about the mayor and those Trojan houses that you're building. Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Remind me what they say about absolute power, Monroe. Fuck you, Jack. Ah, call me an ambulance already. Hell of a payroll. I'm 
I'm guessing Benson's portfolio is only a fraction the size of yours, Monroe. <laughs> Dirt on Fontaine under lock and key. This is your insurance. <laughs> I'm sold up. The others obviously didn't know the links these sons of bitches would go to. It can't be stopped, Council. There's too much money at stake. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, Monroe. Ask the Emperor of Japan. Have some fucking mercy! Operator, put me through to Phelps, arson squad. Yeah, Biggs, it's Jack. I'm at Monroe's. He's in a talkative mood. If you get here in a hurry, you might get something before he bleeds to death. Elsa. Oh, thank God. Where? Fontaine. Dead? Former patient. <laughs> so that crazy son of a bitch finally came back for a checkup. It's Monroe. He's raving. You want information, cocksucker. You get me some medical help. I've got to go, Herschel. Monroe's negotiating again. Do you want my final offer, Leland? Tell me how I find the guy who has Elsa. Not Casey. He did whatever Fontaine asked. He had some kind of power over him. He, he, he did all the fires and a then he went off the roll. rails. I don't have a fucking name! He walked into Bugsprayer. Get me a goddamn doctor! Son of a whore! Give me a goddamn doctor! Ugh. 